So welcome everybody. First of all, I thought what we could do is decide whether we'd like to be seated or if we like, we can stand for this. Or if you feel like lying down, you could even lie down on your back in semi-supine. So that's up to you. It depends on your energy level, depends how you feel like absorbing this session. Um, as long as you can still see me and hear me, I think I'm a little bit loud today, so apologies for that. So go ahead, decide whether you want to be seated, stood or lying on your back. I'm going to stand up. And then wherever you are, we're just going to take a, a moment to find ourselves in this new position, whether we're standing, sitting or lying down on our backs. So if we're standing, we really want to send the weight of our body down through our feet. So find that connection with the floor and allow your weight to drop through into the floor. If you're sitting, same principle, allow the weight to drop through your sitting bones into the chair and really feel the chair. And if you're lying, feel your back melting into the floor. And then just take another moment to allow yourself to receive something flowing upwards and through the top of your body. If you're lying down, it's gonna flow through your back. I give my weight to the floor in order to receive something light and mobile that can travel up my body and immediately you might notice a bit of movement maybe from your ankle joints maybe you find some breath inside connect with something moving inside you this is going to be a very gentle session so have more of a exploratory mind about it we're going to discover something here today good and then I invite you to just take your hands wherever you are, place one hand on the chest, one hand on the abdomen, close your eyes. We're just going to spend a few moments here discovering movement under our hands. We're not judging our breath. We're not trying to change it just trying to get in touch with it. So we're really asking the palms of our hands to wake up to sensation so that they can feel the movement underneath. Good, and again, I repeat, this is a non-judgmental practice. Just explore. And then allow the eyes to open. We're gonna take the backs of the palms and just place them very gently on your ribs. I'll show you sideways. So I'm just touching my ribs. And again, close your eyes, allow yourself to see what you find. Is there any movement happening in my ribs? And if there isn't, I notice that. I just want to notice what's happening. And then just spend a minute going between the upper chest, the abdomen, and the ribs. Good, and as you do that, I'm just going to remind you, if you've been in the last two sessions where John was explaining about our breathing, I'll just do a quick little recap. If you could think of my hands as the diaphragm that sits under the rib, it's a huge, you can think of it as a muscle that goes all the way to the back of the body. And if you could think of my forearms as the ribs, there's a beautiful motion in the body that draws the air in. And then I allow the exhalation. You can even do this with your hands if you like. Interlinking the fingers. Diaphragmatic breathing. Ribs expand. Diaphragm flattens out. 
air is drawn in. And then I exhale and I allow this movement to really exhale all of the air out. Try that a couple of times. And it's amazing how the body can learn through having the right images of what the body wants to do. Good, and then I leave it up to you if you want to just have your hands by your side on your abdomen if you're lying down, resting on your laps if you're sitting, or exploring hands as we begin. So we want to just direct our breathing. Allow the in-breath in through the nose, and then with a very soft, gentle smile, allow the out-breath out through the mouth. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. If you've been in the other sessions, we call this the whispered R. Directing the breath in through the nose. Nice smile, it lifts the palate, it lifts the larynx. So you allow the air out. Just do that a few times in your own time. Be sure to have your attention mostly on the exhalation. We want to get all of that air out particularly any stale or stagnant air stuck up here. Nice, quiet, exploratory mind. Good. On the next out breath, we're not going to have the mouth open. We're just going to allow a hum to begin inside ourselves. It may not produce much sound. It may want to produce more sound. So just have the intention to add a hum on your exhalation. Allow the hum to be as long as your exhalation is, no more, no less. Mm. Allow yourself to do three of those. Good, now do one more and as you do, allow your hands to be exploring to see what they can feel inside. Now don't try to copy my pitch. Everybody will have a different pitch, different sound, and a different length. You might be longer, you might be shorter, and see whether you can feel anything. You might find some vibration right up here, down here. You might find some movement that you didn't have before. Things might start opening up and out and expanding for you. Let's just stop that for now. We're gonna take one moment to just find our weight. If you're standing, find your weight going down into the floor. If you're sitting through the sitting bones, if you're lying, find that connection with your back and the floor. Very important to let go of the weight in order to receive something light. Allow yourselves to receive that light and really engage maybe with your spine. Your spine wants to relax upwards. There's a beautiful thought. If I allow my weight to go down, my spine can relax upwards, even up to the ceiling. Good, and we're going to explore with some other sounds now, but do keep this lovely image in mind and do keep this exploratory hands so you can stay in tune with what's happening for you. So inhalation comes in through the nose. Big smile, we're gonna do a whispered ah. 
I'm just letting the air out by releasing my jaw. When I do this, I want to be sure that I'm not doing anything with my head or indeed my body. Just keeping the body soft, mobile and upwards. Again, allow and direct your in-breath through your nose. Nice big smile. We're gonna try and turn that into a sound. So keeping your attention on letting the air out, allow the air to turn into a sound. Again, we're not so interested in what the sound sounds like. Just see if it can turn into a sound. Air in through the nose. Allow the air in through the nose. Exhaling. Any sound that comes out, allow it to come out. One more inhalation. Very nice, and then just bring yourself back, weight down, spine rising, hands open to sensation and vibration. Place them either here, here, somewhere where they're comfortable. Allow your eyes to close. And just allow yourselves to either do the hum or to allow for a sound to come out. And then, Focus on where you feel the vibration. Where do you feel that resonance? Uh, wherever you feel the resonance, allow that resonance to just travel through into all those tight areas that you found. Maybe the ribs are a bit tight. Maybe the chest feels a bit tight. Mm. Allow the sensation of the vibration to travel through, oxygenating, opening out, creating space inside for healing. Two more of those on your own. Ah. Mm. Good, and keep a sense of those vibrations inside and allow them throughout today's session to just be working their way through into all those gooey, stuck parts. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it's, uh, it, it's a lot to take in there, so I advise you to uh, watch the recording of this session when it's published, which will be in, in well, quite soon. And just go over it again in your own time. It's um, not a question of forcing anything. It is, as Sarah said, it's, it's an exploration. And uh, one needs to approach it very gently. Then um, I'm going to hand over to Julia Outlaw. Over to you, Julia. Hello everyone, nice to see you. I'm going to talk a little bit today about sacred geometry and I know that might not seem a usual sort of topic for a workshop on recovering from long Covid um, but it's an interest of mine as I'm not an expert um, by any means but we talked a bit about trying to find things that help us come more into balance, balance in ourselves and balance with the environment around us and for me understanding a little bit more about the patterns in nature and the patterns in ourselves brings that kind of connected um, more grounded feeling and we usually share something on nutrition in each workshop and I do think of looking at nature and understanding about these patterns as a kind of food um, as a kind of food for the senses or for the soul. Um, so some ideas in here about things that might be helpful, might you might find healing. And I'm just gonna share some pictures 
Um, so I'll just share my screen. Can we see that? Yeah. Thinking about sacred geometry, really about a way of looking at the world, looking at the world in shapes and numbers and thinking of us as part of the world, as part of nature. So in its simplest form, just noticing different things look like each other. You know, here's a picture of the brain um, and a walnut and a brain coral at the top there, you know, and undeniably similar. And, and isn't that interesting to notice? And I know for me, walking amongst the trees has been incredibly helpful. And here's a picture I took and, you know, just looking up at the trees and the branches spreading and the leaves breathing and how similar that is really to what's happening inside us, although upside down. about basic shapes, which is what sacred geometry is really about. And the most basic, a circle, um, here's a circle. So obviously the center, you can just draw it with a compass. You know, every point on the circle is equidistant from the center. And there's something about centering, I think, for healing. Um, so even drawing a circle or noticing circles around us, most of these patterns do um, base are based on circles, most of these kind of geometric patterns we see around. So something about centering. Here's another circle um, on the same line. And you can see that that's now made another shape here in the middle. And there's lots of symbolism about this that you can read lots about it. I won't go into it all now, um, but that shape that kind of overlap could be seen as a third factor, a mediating factor. And we could think about that in many different ways. You think about yin and yang, we've got light and day, night and day. We've got you know, being ill with COVID, not being ill with COVID, but what's, what's in the middle? What else is there um, that we can think about? And what's the relationship between us and our environment and us and our illness? Just some ideas. And you can also see there, um, it makes some triangles, collateral triangles. That's that symbol again, you find it um, in the symbol of a doorway often, and the symbol of arches, something like a relationship between two different spaces. If you draw more circles, uh, if you draw six around one, which is interesting in itself, thinking about, you know, the days of the week. Um, but you get this pattern, a lovely flower, seed, it's called the seed of life. And this pattern's underneath many, many patterns that you find across the world in different cultures. And of course, we find that pattern in nature is just two flowers. Um, flowers have many different types of sacred geometry, but, you know, they're beautiful just to look at these pictures and, and flowers. And I think looking at beautiful things is healing. Like Hannah was talking about a few weeks ago, listening to beautiful music and how healing she found that from her chronic fatigue. Um, and we just intrinsically find looking at these patterns in nature, healing, I think, and, and appealing. Here you can see the equilateral triangle shape. So there's six um, and over on, this side, this camellia is actually based on a geometry of 12, so double the six. I tried to draw them here. You can see it. And obviously this star, this six pointed star is found all over the world in many different cultures as a kind of symbol of reconciling opposites. Um, symbol of three. Here's the 12. And then um, this is just from a few days ago drawing, sacred drawing, drawing geometry with just a pencil and a compass. And there's lots of easy tutorials online. Um, I can send some links to them, but it's very relaxing. 
it's very fun to do. These are all flowers based on different geometries. So here's a three and that kind of geometries. If you cut a passion fruit, actually, you see that pattern. This one's eight. Here's a six, like the daffodil we were just looking at. And this is the 12, the camellia. And they, they don't take long to do. They look sort of complex to me and beautiful, but they, they're really based on quite simple. Well, they're all just circles, overlapping circles. Very relaxing. Here's another flower, um, this time with five geometry. So you can imagine the shape of a pentagon here. And a lot of living things actually have this kind of number five popping up in their patterns. And what's interesting is it's not just found sort of on earth, these patterns, but here, again, you see the five petaled flower, as it were. Um, this is actually patterns of planets. It's actually the, the mapping of the orbits of Earth and the orbit of Venus. And if Venus goes around 13 times around the sun and Earth goes around eight times and you draw those together, it looks like this, um, which I find amazing. And also somehow comforting that, you know, it's not all random. There is some harmonious order that's pervaded in the cosmos and we can recognize it. Other examples of fives, it's not just flowers. We often cut apples like this, but if you cut them the other way, they you find the star. And just the last thing to share, um, this golden ratio, you may have heard of this. It's a ratio, so it's not a number, it's a proportion. Um, this is the ratio here, and this is a golden rectangle so this rectangle is in that ratio so the ratio between these sides Oops. And you don't really need to understand um, these words but somehow this shape again we find intrinsically attractive and people know this you know it's used a lot in architecture it's that's the shape of a credit card the proportion of doorways often um, and this spiral that is formed by this ratio is called the Fibonacci spiral. And that spiral is very related to growth, the world of growth. Um, particularly in nature, you see so many examples of it. So here's two. Just if you look at um, often flowers when they're unfurling or buds, here you can see the same spiral in the way that this plant is growing. It's just beautiful. And some flower. The way the seed heads grow is a Fibonacci spiral as well. And they do that really because they can fit the most um, seeds into a particular area. So there's, there's real reasons for it. Um, but again, I think it's interesting just to notice these things and, and wonder at them really. And of course, it's, it's not just in plants, these ratios, they're also in us in humans. So again, don't need to understand the whole diagram, but this idea that we, well, it's a fact really, that this proportion appears all over our body. So from our, if you think about our height and you split our height at our navel, the proportion up to our head and up to the ground is that same proportion, phi, the golden ratio. Same in our head, our eyes are at that point. In our arms, forearms, in our fingers, you can't see it on the diagram, but if you put your forefinger up, pointing up in the air and then just bend it, I don't know if you can see me, then here is the Fibonacci spiral in those proportions between the knuckles. You know, in an ear, again, in our womb, for women, the uh, proportion of the length and the height of the womb is, is in that proportion. Even in our DNA, the spiral of it, if you take a cross section, it is a 10 pointed star, which you form by using this ratio. So really interesting correspondences. And 
really for me it's just noticing you know we grow the same as nature and nature naturally heals and it goes through storms and it goes through all sorts of things um but it, it wants to heal and there are some links that we can begin to notice so towards healing really is noticing noticing some of these patterns and there's lots to explore it's a vast subject really um and you can go down all sorts of avenues but even the simplest thing of just looking at a leaf or a flower can be interesting drawing like i said with a compass um exploring what that's like and it, it requires some mindfulness some attention and i think that's very good for calming the nervous system as well which we need and just exploring that's my daughter there exploring getting a bit stuck in the flowers so i'm going to stop the pictures and that's it so sacred geometry and healing just to notice what's around you explore um, and maybe have a go at drawing and i've put together some resources in case you're interested in following any of that up or stay to ask me some questions i'll hand back to john thank you julia well it, it really is fascinating and um it's very much of the, at the core of the uh, principles we're working with in Harmony in Health, which is to try and see the, the connectedness, the way things are related. And um, I find it interesting that in ancient times, in ancient philosophies, people did try to understand ourselves and the world in that way through uh, how everything is connected and in, in some ways we seem to have we seem to have lost that then i'm going to hand over to Anne now okay over to you Anne. thank you very much john hello everybody thank you sarah and julia you've done such a wonderful job for me to walk into literally walk into with my feet and I'm going to move myself back a little bit here, adjust my screen, because I'm going to be both sitting and standing, and we'll be doing some things together. Um, if you do have a ball, that would be great. If not, you can practice afterwards. Tennis light ball. If you have a piece of material textile, as John mentioned at the beginning, um, and I wrote in, that would also be lovely. But again, if you haven't got, don't worry, you can take note, watch a video and do it afterwards. Uh, I'm going to sit here first and you can be sitting as well. Uh, if you have bare feet, again, that's lovely because we want to see these beautiful things we've got. If there's one underrated area of our body, it is usually our feet. They're forgotten about. We often complain about them. We don't like them. How many positive things do we have to say about our feet as we get older? Now, if I have time for some photographs, I'm going to show you some little slides. But if not, can you go back in time and remember when you were a baby? Can you remember your feet? Probably not but you were there with them straight away after pushing yourself out from your mother's womb with your feet there you've already been training with your hands and feet and your body in the uterus and activating those all those thousands of cells we have especially in the hands and feet but we're thinking about our feet and then you came out and one of the first things you explored in for yourself what was that after a while apart from your mother's nipple of course and your hands and looking for that it was finding your feet and i'm sure you've seen photographs of babies or seen them finding their feet with their hands and feet up in the air centrally tactile 
they were so important. They were the first things we got to know, really. One of the first things we got to know. And then we forget about them. We start walking on them. We take them for granted. And I'm just suggesting to you now that we have a wealth, a wealth of healing in our feet if we can learn to acknowledge them, take care of them, caress them, and walk on them. We have the wonderful time of year now, spring. Get out barefoot if you can. The old Dr. Knight method is still in vogue. You can go out in the morning on the dew. If you have a garden bed or in the park, take off your shoes, get rid of the asphalt, get rid of our soles of our shoes and start reconnecting to the earth again and all the wealth of power that the earth can give us. We have continual communication between our feet and the brain going on all the time, telling us where we are in space, where we're going, where we're off to. How do we feel? Just look at the expression of your feet. Look at feet um, uh, of people sitting down. How do they look? If you see mine now, you know, what does that tell you? I'm not really very happy there. But to get a kind of vibrance in your feet, and it will lift the hold of you along with your breathing, of course, everything, everything is engaged together, communicating together. So have a look at your feet. How are they? They're beautiful things. Now I'm going to ask you to take your ball and we're going to roll. You can be sitting or you can be standing. And I'm going to um, sort of half stand. So I'm going to bring myself up a bit. And I'm just going to put the ball underneath the sole of my foot. And I'm just going to roll it gently. Choose one foot. Oh, one thing before we do that. Let's do a little party trick. Can you put your hands out in front of you? Are they the same length? You could have done it against a wall as well, but I just have a little check. There you're both your arms. Right, one foot. And now start rolling the ball with your foot. Backwards and forwards. Through underneath the ball of your, um, the, the archway, thinking of uh, Julia's shapes and arches. They're all in our feet. We have tripods, we have triangles, we have spheres, we have spirals. It's in the most amazing complex structure of our anatomy. It's absolutely beautiful. So let us just gently roll. We're not attacking it at all, our foot. Just roll it, just roll. And in between time, just put a little bit of pressure down on the ball. It might be a rubber ball, doesn't matter. Any sort of ball, just put some pressure down over a cover a whole area of your foot and your heel and into the sides and outsides toes ball of your foot underneath your toes roll a little bit more might be able to put a bit more pressure on because it might be a little bit painful to start with and that will gently ease out and we're really stimulating now all those sensory nerve endings under the soles of it which correspond, if you are like me, <laughs> interested in reflexology to other parts of our body. Okay, let's just tap a little bit more before we put our foot back down on the ground. Place them down, close your eyes and just feel the difference between the foot you have rolled on and the other foot. And now place your hands in front of you and that arm is usually longer on the side you have been rolling. I just wanted to show you that by stimulating underneath one a sole of our foot will have a, a further effect on the rest of the body. So now we've got one side of the body different to the other. We've got a lovely flow of energy and circulation, feel warmth on this side right through. I am feeling, and many people do when they do that. Let's try the other one. Let's roll and let's equal ourselves out, balance ourselves out. 
And then roll, 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 roll. And then interspersed with pressure over the whole area of your foot. Gentle pressure down. Again, if you've got a goal for you, just to be a little bit more careful because I haven't got any given it. And roll a bit more. And place your foot back down. Close your eyes and note now we have acknowledged this side of our body as well, and it will be the whole of your body. It won't just limit itself to the sole of that foot. Bring up your arms again, and hey presto, they're back to the same length again. I hope yours are too. <laughs> so that's the book. A little bit every day, it does work wonders for you. It really is a lovely thing to do. Of course, you can buy other types of balls. You can buy all sorts of things, but I do like simple things. And for me, it is also the pebbles. I collect stones and they're also beautiful to form your foot over and it's natural. So if you collect stones, get them out and you can massage your foot over something. You've got no one to massage for you. We're going to do a little bit of massage for ourselves, but it, um, we can also use the ball and the stones. The other thing I am a great purveyor of, it is a foot bath. And I have put water in here. I can put stones in here. If you do this in an evening, you can put some sea salt in there swish it about and I have collected now it's spring a lovely time you can have herbs you can have um, essential oils um, I've got some dandelion from the garden and some rose petals I'm going to sprinkle them in there and it is something about the aesthetics the beauty of something makes you feel good so putting your feet in a foot bath which is made delicate um, and put your feet in and listen to some beautiful music. I can't think of a better evening actually than doing that. So there, and I can put both feet in and I can massage my feet over the stones. So that's another little suggestion for you. And doing your breathing as well whilst you're there, you will feel much calmer and feel a lovely sense of well-being in yourself as you are healing yourself. So that's a foot bath which I thoroughly recommend for you. Right now we're going to now say hello to our feet or a foot and I'm just going to dry that one off. I have a little one here. Now, if it's difficult for you to reach your foot, and I appreciate that it's not always easy to do it for yourself. So if you've got no one to help you, you can use your hand. It is the practically the same anatomy, number of joints, the same sensory nerves as we have in our feet, but we just use our hands so much more. So it's nice doing the feet for that earth connection. But now, for now, if you can't reach your feet, just do exactly the same on your hand. We are all skin hungry now. And that is another reason the foot bath is beautiful or a hand bath, because it is the feel of water on our skin, giving again those lovely good feel hormones, chemicals start flowing in our body, again in our bloodstream. So let us just hold around our feet. Can you put one hand on each side? So you're like cradling your foot, just cradling, holding gently. Your skin is hungry for touch after the um, last the present situation. So let us just hold around our feet, give that good thoughts and warmth through our hands into our feet or into your hand if you're doing that. And just intuitively, just let your hands do what they want to do. 
Try not to override it. What shall I do? Am I doing it right? Just do it. Trust yourself. And just let your hands do the, do the talking. Just let them move intuitively. Trace your foot. How does the skin feel? How do your hands feel for your feet? If your feet could talk, what would they say? What would this foot say? Can you feel the hard areas, the bones? We have so many bones in here. We have so many joints. We have 33 joints in here. Can we gently pull to one side, widen the foot? Can we widen our foot out? Can we do a twisting action? If we hold on each side of our foot and do a twist, that is the beautiful release for our spine. If you look, we talked about shapes with Julie here. If you look at the shape of your inner foot, it is the same as our spine. There. So this is the reflex point for the spine. The ball of the foot is for our lung area. So you might wish to massage with your thumbs. Use the tips of your fingers. You don't have to do this hard. Again, trust yourself. You can gently pull and stretch your toes forwards and backwards. And I think this is a lovely one for opening up your lungs, your breathing. So let us, again, you can do this on a pebble, on a stone, standing or sitting, stretching that way. We want the foot to move in so many different directions. We can circle our rotates to rotation. So we have movement and touch going on. And don't forget, please, your ankle. Can you just gently circulate and rotate around your ankle? Here you can do without any oil or cream. You can just do with bare skin and on your hands. Or you can use an aromatherapy oil, which you blended yourself or bought ready blended. Um, or you can use a cream. You might have a cream, a foot cream. Another thing in the foot bath, which I can recommend, is mint, peppermint, eucalyptus. It can help open. We get the lovely um, aroma of the oils there to help open us as well. So you get the best of both worlds there. And gently massage there also. And you can gradually go a little bit deeper and a little bit harder as your foot gets used to it. Okay, we've only got time to do the one foot, so I advise you to do the other foot afterwards this evening and you'll sleep hopefully a much deeper sleep. I had a group once convalescing from um, some cancer patients and we did so simple foot massage and they um, did it together and I got some letters afterwards and they said that they so appreciated having learnt the significance there is something very significant about touching the feet and touching each other's feet. So there were friends or partners, they had put aside half an hour every evening to do this. And they said it had opened up so much for relationships as well and talking much better than sitting watching TV. <laughs> so it's something we can all do. We can all do it. So going back into our babyhood again and discover your feet. So let us, I see the clock is ticking. I could stay with you much longer for this lovely um, relaxing session with you with our feet. But can we just either sit or stand and just again acknowledge your feet and just go gently backwards and forward. We have a tripod base on our feet. Imagine that picture between the big toe, little toe, and the heel. Equal. You have a lovely wide, long foot. You have the base all connected to the earth, to the ground. Such an important connection. And can we just go from side to side, rolling your feet from side to side, and just allow yourself to move with your feet. This is your base, your foundation. You have also a center within you. Try and relax your outer.
and just stretch up your toes and place them down and spread them. Stretch up your toes and place them down on the floor. And please, if you can, go barefoot wherever you can. Enjoy your feet. Take care of them and love them. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, that was really fascinating and I'm going to have a go at that this evening. <laughs> so <clears throat> we come to the end of our presentations and um, shortly we'll go into breakout rooms where uh, those of you who want to stay can have a dialogue with some of our presenters about what we're, what we're working on, raise any questions. I'll just tell you a bit about what we have planned for the next event, which is going to be on the 3rd of June. And our presenters will be again, Sara Karushi, who will be continuing work on voice and breath. One of our team members from Poland, Malgorzata Jablonska, will introduce us to storytelling. And Dr. Eva Bojnohovic, Professor of Music and Health at the Royal College of Music in Stockholm and a researcher at the Department of Clinical Neuroscience, the Karolinska Institute, will share with us some innovative approaches to connecting with the body. So I'm really looking forward to that. Then uh, I'm going to stop the recording now.